Hi guys, in today's video, we're gonna learn about the fluid mosaic model of the cell surface membrane or oh, the plasma membrane So, why we call it as fluid mosaic model? Okay, now let's see a very short, nice video clip on how this membrane behave So if you look at the video, you can see here, these are the phospholipid molecules So they are floating they are responsible for the fluidity and these green color bits are the proteins they are embedded in the phospholipid layer in a mosaic pattern so yeah we call it as fluid mosaic model okay now let's see what are the components of the cell surface membrane they are composed of phospholipids proteins cholesterol glycolipids and glycoprotein now let's see one by one phospholipid so you can see in the diagram yeah the phospholipid molecule they are composed of head and two tail so this head is the phosphate group which is polar in the character and yeah and the tails are non-polar so you can see the phospholipid molecules are arranged in two layers where we call it as phospholipid bilayer. So because of the polar and non-polar characteristics, they have developed another character which is hydrophilic. The polar regions are hydrophilic and hydrophobic which is non-polar. So hydrophilic means they love water or they attract water hydrophobic means they repel water you know phobia is like they are scared of water so we call it hydrophobic so now let's see the functions of phospholipids it allows lipid soluble substances to enter and leave the cell it prevents water soluble substances to entering and leaving the cell and it makes the membrane flexible and self sealing Another major component is protein. So protein, there are two types, extrinsic protein and intrinsic protein. So extrinsic protein, they are embedded in one layer of the phospholipid bilayer. You can see here the purple color one. Yeah, and the intrinsic protein, they are spanning throughout the bilayer. So you can see these purple ones are going through both layers. So that's why we call it as intrinsic or integral protein at least. Integrates the whole layer. And these intrinsic protein can be divided into two major types as channel protein and carrier protein. So the channel protein, as you can see in this diagram, so they have so they can allow the molecules which can be soluble or which are not soluble in the phospholipid bilayer to enter the cell and if you look at this diagram here it's the carrier protein they have a binding site and they will allow the molecule or a specific molecule they are like a lock and a key so if the key is the substance if it can bind to the binding site they will bind and then they will enter the cell in here you can see clearly this carrier protein flips and then they allow the molecule to enter the cell okay okay now let's see where the cholesterol is located in the plasma membrane so when I say cholesterol you know it is bad for us but we really want that cholesterol to live let's see what's the function of cholesterol so these are the functions they reduce lateral movement of other molecules including phospholipid you can see in the diagram they are lying between the phospholipid molecules so they don't allow the phospholipids to move apart from its standard state or move further away from the state 
and they make the membrane less fluid in high temperature you know when the temperature increases the phospholipid molecules are fluid in characteristic so they are tend to move very fast so that movement is restricted by this cholesterol molecule and they maintain the rigidity of the membrane as well another major component or major components are glycoprotein and glycolipids so glycoprotein as you can see in the diagram this is the protein integral protein and this is the carbohydrate chain so this chain is attached to the protein so we call it as glycoprotein glyco indicates the carbohydrate chain and the protein okay so what is glycolipid so the glycolipid as you can see in the diagram here again the carbohydrate chain this is attached to a lipid in here it's phospholipid so we call it as glycolipid glyco again indicates the carbohydrate chain and it is attached to the lipid so we call glycolipid so glycolipids and glycoproteins they uh, their function is very very similar now let's see what are their functions so they act as adhesive sites or they help cells to attach to one another and so form the tissue and they act as cell recognition sites and thereby they can recognize one another for example lymphocytes can recognize an organism's own cells and also they act as the surface or the cell surface receptors in the case of hormones neurotransmitters and in drugs okay now it's the review time so let's see whether you can label this diagram so we have a a1 a2 it's better if you can take a piece of paper and write or label them so a1 a2 this is b and uh, c d e f g h i indicates one thing okay okay now let's see the answers okay so what is a is the phospholipid molecule a1 is the phosphate head or the head of the phospholipid molecule and this is the fatty acid tail and B is the glycolipid because you can see here the carbohydrate chain is attached to the lipid so it is glycolipid and C is the glycoprotein okay because the glyco or the carbohydrate chain is attached to the protein molecule so as they have indicated only this bit we can say this is the carbohydrate chain and E they are in between phospholipid molecules so they are cholesterol and F it's embedded only in one layer of the phospholipid bilayer so it is extrinsic protein and yeah G um, is the intrinsic protein as it intrude or integrate both layers and we can also label this as channel protein as you can see here it's a pole okay so what is HI that is the phospholipid bilayer as you can see here okay hope this video helps thank you for watching
and please share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.